Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. My name is James David and in today's video, I'll be talking a little bit more on the wildlife here concerning this particular moth known as Olinda hawk moth. Now, of course, this is nothing much to do with the plant care or plant species, but here I'm going to talk about this little pest looking creature, which is actually a caterpillar belonging to a moth family. In a way, a lot of people will just shriek and just avoid this kind of creatures in the garden. I, for one, want to talk a little bit more about this particular insect, if I were to put that in a category where it is sort of like a love and hate relationship. In a way, I can say that it's a pest, which I don't want anything to munch upon my plants. But again, I will really enjoy having moths and butterfly coming to my garden. So this is a story about my alocasia plant that has been sort of like one day it was there and the next day, hey, where is my plant? Where is it gone to? And I see something's eaten and I could not identify whether it is a caterpillar or whether it is a grasshopper that did this, this biting and nibbling upon the leaves and Strange enough, the, the whole plant has just gone disappeared and what I've actually found is this particular caterpillar is actually munching on my leaves from at the back. So being in green color, I was not able to detect it. So in a way, I would like to talk about this particular pest, if you were to call it. In a way, I can say the love and hate relationship is due to the fact that they are pollinators. So a little bit story about this. So I hope you sit back and enjoy the show while this plant is being <laughs> eaten. So the menu here is actually Alocasia mycorrhiza, commonly known as giant taro. I have seen many videos and pictures of this particular culprit as please eat eating upon a calocasia plant, especially those premium and extremely expensive ones. In those days, when it comes to pharaoh's mass, a singular plant can cost easily about 10 to 15k. And can you imagine this particular caterpillar has actually consumed the whole leaf, leaving out the framework upon where the main wise is not being consumed. So it's most like a ghost-like and poor and pity all those people who are cultivating this particular types of premium pricey colocations where you find that they only sold about one or two leaves and because of this particular caterpillar have actually consumed on the leaves the plant succumbs to stress and rots away so for all those people who actually cultivate Alocasias and colocasias and even endanium species known as desert rose do watch out for this particular culprit because they do come and actually consume the whole plant. In a way, I also noticed there is some wisdom here when it comes to this particular uh, adult uh, butterflies. When they come, they lay egg according to the size of the plant. So sometimes you'll find one or two caterpillars just to consume all the leaves and in a case if the plant is very big you may even find about 10 caterpillars munching over the plant so in a way this is one thing that you have to keep an eye when you are cultivating rare and exotic plants just a basic information concerning this particular caterpillar known as oleander hawk moth these particular types are actually nocturnal they normally are active during the night time they do eventually turn to pupae and will move away from the plant so you will not see it hanging or appear in appearance like how a butterfly pupae exists where the crystal is, is upon the plant this particular one actually moves into the soil and hides away i once thought that this pupae have detached itself from the plant and i kept it inside my house thinking that this particular one in a way rescuing it from predators and only to find that it in a way it was shocking as it started to unfurl and come out of its pupae somewhere early in the morning like 5 a.m 6 a.m with a very loud noise so something like a rattling sound and it did really awake my family members in shock because they were surprised to hear a, a rattling sound coming out from the pupae only to find that this particular moth is actually coming out early in the twilight timing so do watch out if you're keeping them indoors especially the pupae that when they are actually in a way turning into a butterfly they do make a lot of noise 
Now, apart from that, you must understand a little bit more of the details when it comes to moths. They do not fold their wing upward. Normally, moths are very much uh, flat on their surface and very much hairy. So this particular one may not be so interesting, especially most of the moth species. But however, I find that this particular one appears to be more like a war plane kind of a colorization. Where it has a very nice uh, green colored tones on the wings and the body as a camouflage. They do have some defense mechanism where they, it has sort of like a blue eyelids kind of colors upon its body. In a way, it appears to be a little bit interesting because it appears to be like someone watching over you. In a way, to keep away predators, making it look like a snake. So in a way, I believe that nature finds its way to protect itself. Okay, so with, with all things being said, uh, there is always, I've noticed that some gardeners would find a hate relationship where they will kill this caterpillar and thinking it that it is a toxic, poisonous pest. I, I would not consider so. In most cases, when I find something as such as this, I will always uh, separate the leaf, give two or three leaves for it to consume and let it turn into a pupae. In a way, I find that it being a pollinator carries more weight as being an environmental concern because as you know, there's a lot of pesticide and poisonous and toxic sprays has been introduced widely around the nature's surroundings. So in a way, I find that uh, doing a little bit of this actually helps. So I find that when it comes to caterpillars, I do not see them as pests. Because in a long run, if you were to look at it, if everybody eradicate this particular beautiful creature, we will lo would have lost this for the next generation to enjoy a, such a beautiful flying creature. I almost forgot to mention concerning this. When it comes to caterpillar droppings, it has a very high nutrition value for the plant because of its high content of fertilizer where it actually aids and strengthens the plant for the next generation. In a way, nature finds itself to create such a balance so that what it takes, it gives back to the plant. In such a way, the plant strengthens itself for it to regenerate back. Very much similar like vermicompost where it comes from worms, there is another one as such as this that comes from caterpillars. One thing for sure, it is not highly cultivated in a consumer context where it is not commercialized very strongly. However, do take note that if you were to come across caterpillar droppings, do use them as fertilizer for your plants. So now I have come to the end of my video. I will hope you really enjoyed my thoughts and opinions and my experiences consider this particular caterpillar and hawk moth story. If you can, please do click like and subscribe my channel. I would really appreciate if you can put your comment and thoughts about this particular caterpillars and what your thoughts and concern about them. Do watch my last part of my video where I placed a lot of these pictures about these caterpillars where I also find it intriguing as the leaves that they consume, they change color according to what they eat. So in a way, if the colocasia is it's in a red color tones, the same caterpillar camouflage itself into the red tones. Similarly, the yellow tones and the green tones based on what leaves they have been consumed. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Catch you again in my next video. Take care and enjoy yourself. Bye.